like to thank Sitan Prabhu for flying all the way down <laughs> to Bhaktivedanta's manor. I think that um, it's been very enlightening just listening to him, isn't it? Yes. Very nice. He's a jewel. Uh, uh -huh. um, you know, I like this idea that the ninth chapter is the secret of all secrets. I like secrets. Everybody likes secrets. If someone comes up to you and says, Have you heard? Did you hear about it? You didn't hear about it? I'm going to tell you about it. <laughs> Gather around. You want to hear a secret? Half the time, it's something you already know. And the other half of the time, it's not that very important. But here, Lord Krishna, who, as Sutapa Prabhu was saying, is being directed uh, by Arjuna, um, he says, it's the king of all secrets. It's the most confidential knowledge, Prabhupada says, he translates it. And this is how to see God. If someone says to you, I can show you how to see God face to face, well, what would you say to that? But if God himself says, I can show you how to see me face to face in your life, then we can accept that information because God is speaking himself. So, um, Krishna seems to be hinting in the ninth chapter at least that um, just small things are enough to allow you to see him. But small things done repeatedly. Small drops of water, they wear away even the hard stone, isn't it? and small tiny drops of rain, they'll, they'll wear away that mountain that he was speaking about. They're very, very powerful. Um, there was, uh, you know, there was a, uh, when Gandhi wanted to um, throw the British out of India, he just realized that if I get everybody, lots and lots and lots and lots of people, to just do one small thing each, then it is very powerful. One small thing, but to do it every day. So they did the spinning and every day. And that went on to become the very symbol of independent India. That's all, all it was, just one small thing. But it broke the back of British industry. One tiny thing. That's all it takes. You see, one tiny little virus is enough to have a six foot, 150 pound man flat on his back. And how big is a virus? A very small thing. And if you get one every day, it's very bad. So if you do something good, every day. You can take uh, you know, an antibiotic, not for a virus, I know. <laughs> I'm not a pharmacist, but I know that one. So there are medicines that you can take just a little, 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 little every day, and you'll be very, um, you, you, you'll be very healthy. One time Srila Prabhupada was in Vrindavan, and he was walking with his disciples, and of course, Prabhupada set a very high bar for seeing Krishna, in one sense, you could say. Because he said, you get up at half past three in the morning. Oh, Adi Bhakri. <laughs> then you take cold shower. Oh, Adi Bhakri. And then you chant Hare Krishna Mantra for two hours. And then what? And then you have a class for an hour on the Puranas. And then you have breakfast, if you're lucky, on porridge and a few chickpeas. At least that's the standard that Prabhupada introduced. And when on a special day you would get a slice of orange. So devotees were thinking, when, when we were young, we were thinking, ah, I can do this. I'm very specially privileged. Prabhupada has given us something to do and we will become Krishna conscious by doing it. So there was a tendency for them to look down on others. Well, one time they were in Vrindavan and Prabhupada saw an old lady that he'd known from, you know, from many, many years before. And she, she'd been there many, many years before that. And every day, she used to go down to the Muna River and she used to bring um, a lota, a big lota of water for the puja in the Radha temple. So he pointed to this lady and he said, you see this lady? Every single day she just does this one thing. She goes to the river, she gets the water and she comes and she gives this to Radha and Krishna here. He says she doesn't know the philosophy that well, she doesn't chant very much, but every day she just does one small thing. He said, I can tell you that at the end of this life, this woman is going back home to Radha and Krishna for one small act of devotion repeated every single day because that has qualified her to see Krishna. 
she could see Krishna in her life. There was um, uh, there was a, a, a famous story about a, a, a great sculptor that carved a, a beautiful elephant that looked so real that when the king came along and inspected his handiwork, he said, how did you manage to make a beautiful elephant that looks so real? He said, your majesty, it's very simple. I start with a big square block of stone and I just chip, 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 small, 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 chip, chip, chip. And I remove everything that is not the elephant. And at the end of removing everything in the stone that is not the elephant, I have an elephant. <laughs> so Prabhupada said, he said, life is like a block of wood. He said, and you just have to carve Krishna. You just have to carve Krishna. Get rid of the things that aren't Krishna, and then you will have Krishna. You'll be able to see Krishna face to face. But one chip, 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 small, 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 every day. So then, um, Krishna goes on to sort of say, well, actually, I, I'm going to help you now. I'm going to give you some examples. And of course, as Prabhupada said, he shows him two things. I'm in everything. Everything that you touch, taste, everything. Everything that you smell, everything that you can see, everything. I'm there. But especially, I'm in those things that impress you. I'm especially in those things that you love. I'm especially in those things that make you go, wow. In the Taitiriya Upanishad, the, the speaker of the Taitiriya Upanishad in the Brugu Valley section, he says, wow, because he has just attained realization, wow. But the word wow is ha-u, so he goes, ha-u, ha-u, he's seeing, and he's come to this realization. So now this is what Krishna is giving to uh, Arjuna now, he's saying, uh, I give you Divya Drishta. Divya Drishta. I give you divine eyes to see this. And it is important, and in the Upanishads we find that only to those persons whom Krishna has chosen personally will he reveal himself. So by all your fasting, by all your reading of Gita Shloks, by all your penances, by all your charity, you cannot force Krishna to reveal himself to you one micron, even less than a micron, the width of an mm, electron. Mm, more than that, little, some, whatever is smaller than that. You cannot force Krishna, but when Krishna chooses, then he will give. So how will Krishna choose? Well, then he gives you the secret in the ninth, the 10th, the 11th, and the 12th. It is by bhakti, by devotion, because that is the only way that you can force Krishna, by love. And if you love someone, you do something for them every day, you remember them every day. You do a little service. How is Krishna pleased? Just with a very small service. Patram, pushpam, palam, toyam. But yo me bhakti, priyachati. It is the devotion that is important. But I'm not devoted. You see? So you then become devoted to the cause of becoming devoted. Yes, I'm not devoted, so become devoted to becoming devoted. This is devotee. And when you're devoted to becoming devoted, guess what happens? Krishna, like Garuda, helped the sparrow. Krishna comes in and sees his sparrow-like devotee and helps us all. You see, because by ourselves, we can do nothing. What can a tiny, tiny, tiny jiva do? So even our inquiry into devotion our practice of devotion, our understanding of what is devotion, it's all coming from Krishna. All coming from Krishna. At the end, we're just humble beggars. We're just asking. And Krishna says, finally, it's very, very important, never forget this, that the whole world, well, Krishna doesn't say this, but I'm saying this to you, that the whole world has become frustrated with human relationships. The whole world has become frustrated with families, with teams, with companies, with politicians and leaders. The whole world, this is Kali Yuga, everybody, everybody becomes frustrated with other people. So our circle of friendship gets smaller, smaller, smaller until we just live in the universe which is inhabited just by one person. But in this beginning of the 12th chapter, Krishna is saying it is very important to understand don't become frustrated with me. 
Don't rule me. I am a person. I am your friend. We are intimately connected in the past, in the present, and in the future. So do not succumb. If you want to do it that way, you'll spend a very, very, very long time trying to attain me. But the short and easy way is to just understand I'm a person, I'm your friend, I love you. All I'm asking you to do is to give me a little love every day. And if you do that, I will reveal to you everything. It's such a simple secret. And that is bhakti. Hare Krishna. And now we will have a very, very generous, by the incarnation of generosity, we will have a 10-minute break. <laughs> Enjoy. We will begin in 10.